complication is that the Mandelbrot set also includes what are called complex and imaginary numbers. Okay, so in, an imaginary number is a number that when you square it, you get a negative number. And that's a little hard for us to understand, and so they call them imaginary. It's just a name. Uh, <laughs> I hate that they have that name because it makes it sound like they don't exist. You know, they're fabricated. No, they, they, they do exist. Imaginary numbers do exist. And to add insult to injury, the numbers that are not imaginary, they call real. But it's just, that's just terminology. They're, both are equally true, let's put it that way. But how do we have a number that times itself is negative? And, and it's represented by a lowercase i. That's the, the kind of the primary imaginary number when i times i is negative 1. How, how do we make sense of that? After all, uh, Im imaginary numbers are not positive because a positive number squared is positive. And, and yet, the imaginary number times itself is negative. Imaginary numbers are not negative because a negative number squared is also positive. And imaginary numbers are not zero because zero squared is zero. Weird. So we have a number that's not positive, it's not negative, and it's not zero. And that leaves us kind of scratching our heads a little bit. We have trouble with that. Well, I got news for you. Not everything in this universe is intuitive. <laughs> If you've ever had a class in quantum mechanics, you know, the universe doesn't work always the way that we expect it to. You know, our intuition really is based on experience. And the fact is most adults don't have experience with imaginary numbers, and so they seem strange. But it's just, it's just a matter of experience. When you were a little kid, negative numbers probably didn't make a lot of sense, right? You, you know, I can have one apple, I can have two apples. How can I have negative two apples? That doesn't make sense. How can you have less than nothing? You get a little bit older, you get a bank account, suddenly negative numbers make a lot of sense, right? <laughs> yes, I can have less than nothing. <laughs> well, imaginary numbers are the same way. You gain a little experience and you find, yes, there are numbers that when you square them, you get a negative. But they're not positive, they're not negative, and they're not zero. How do we make sense of that? One so how do we make sense of imaginary numbers? That is the question. Imaginary numbers are not positive, they're not negative and not zero. So what are they? Since the square root of negative one doesn't have a real solution, we assign it the letter i for imaginary and we have to accept that i is equal to the square root of negative one. Alternatively, we uh, have come to understand that i squared is equal to negative one. So imaginary numbers are not positive, they're not negative, and they're not zero. And the, um, when you square the imaginary unit, when you square i, you get uh, a negative number. You get negative one. So let's take a few steps back and look at what we do know. We do know that one times one is equal to one. And we also know that negative 1 times negative 1 is also equal to 1. Um, we are told that i times i, i squared, is equal to negative 1. So how do we make sense of this? Well, what else equals negative 1? Okay, 1 times negative 1 is equal to negative 1 and negative one times one is equal to negative one. So technically, i is equal to one times negative one, or negative one times one. So how do we make sense of this? How can i be equal to one times negative one? And this is where the two-dimensional numbers that I talked about in my previous video comes into play. Okay, so in two-dimensional numbers, 1 is equal to this. So 1, in, in the uh, convention that I'm using, 1 has 1's in the forward diagonal, and negative 1 has negative 1's in the forward diagonal. Now if you take, uh, if you do the matrix math that I showed you in my previous video, and you multiply uh, this matrix, the one matrix by itself, if you square it, you're going to get the one matrix. And if you take the negative one matrix and square it, multiply it by itself, you're going to get the one matrix. So the 
two by two matrix uh, form of the number system in the two dimensional number system. The one behaves like one, so one squared is equal to one, and minus one is equal to one. So in the two dimensional number system, there's now uh, room for another kind of number on the backward diagonal. And so in the two dimensional number system that I've been uh, talking about in my video series, I is, is equal to uh, one and minus one. It's got one um, on the backward diagonal, it's got a positive one and a negative one. And negative i is the inverse of that. And so negative i is equal to minus one and positive one. But this is only possible when we realize that complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers. Once we expand our mind to realize that complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers, the concept of um, the imaginary i is no longer um, sort of mystical and confusing. Okay, we've got a ponderable um, ex explanation for what, um, what i is and what negative i is. So in the two-dimensional number system, when you take i and you square it, so when you take the two-dimensional representation of i and multiply it by itself, if you do the um, matrix multiplication that I showed you in, a, in my previous video, you will find that this times this is equal to negative 1, what I am calling negative 1, which I showed you here. So negative 1 is equal to negatives on the forward diagonal. And when you take i squared in the matrix form, when you multiply this matrix by this matrix, uh, using matrix multiplication, you get ones, minus ones on the forward diagonal. So this is functionally identical to the uh, imaginary numbers where i squared is equal to uh, minus one. Only um, this, uh, all of the numbers in my matrix are real and ponderable numbers. They are uh, one, uh, positive one minus one, positive one minus one, and your answer is minus one minus one. Okay, so um, so this is uh, this is how imaginary numbers are represented in uh, two dimensional in the two dimensional number system that I am promoting. I'm promoting this as a teaching tool. I did not invent this. I got the idea from Robert Distinti. Um, and through, you know, a lot of research, um, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult to find uh, this approach to the two-dimensional approach to complex numbers. It is out there, but it is not popular. This is not how complex numbers and imaginary numbers are taught. And I think if they were taught like this right off the top, the uh, confusion and the amb ambiguity would be, um, would be reduced. So in the video clip I showed, the presenter said that imaginary numbers are not positive and not negative and not zero. But in the two-dimensional number systems, it appears that imaginary numbers are simultaneously positive and negative. Okay, so this is a different kind of number than the real numbers, okay? The real numbers can be positive or negative or zero and imaginary numbers are simultaneously positive and negative. Okay, so this backward diagonal here is, um, is an imaginary number, this is i, and it is simultaneously positive and negative, and this is only possible when you place uh, the complex numbers into a two by two matrix. It's only, um, you're only able to realize this when you place the complex numbers into a two by two matrix and put the, um, the imaginary number on um, the backward diagonal and have it be simultaneously positive and negative. So the real number one is on the forward diagonal, it has the same sense, and the real negative one is on the forward diagonal and it has, they both have the negative um, sense and the imaginary, uh, the imaginary component of the complex number is simultaneously positive and negative.
on the backward diagonal. And so uh, I think this is, I think um, looking at it from this perspective, uh, looking at it from the perspective, this is a different kind of number. So real number, numbers are positive or negative or zero and imaginary numbers are, are positive and negative and they can also be zero. So I can put zeros here because I did it here. So if we don't have an imaginary component, uh, if we make it, we can make the imaginary component can, zero, it can be zero, um, but it, it's not um, negative or positive, obviously, when it's zero. And so I hope that uh, makes sense. Uh, after watching the video that uh, I showed you a clip of I felt compelled to make this video because there is a lot of confusion surrounding imaginary numbers and when I see people teaching it and injecting the confusion into the discourse then you know it gets me thinking well how can I explain this to uh, to to my friends how can I explain this to you in a way that uh, that makes sense and so um, imaginary numbers are uh, simultaneously positive and negative when they're not zero. And so, um, this, so this hopefully demystifies a little bit uh, imaginary numbers. We need the two by two matrix in order to um, completely and unambiguously express the complex numbers um, in, in this is the correct form. I think this is the form that should be taught first before they start teaching the symbolic language of algebra because the symbolic language of algebra, as beautiful as it is, uh, is difficult for people to, to grasp, you know, especially when you're starting out. And I know I have a lot of trouble processing symbols. And so, uh, so the symbolic language of algebra uh, can be very difficult for some people. And so, you know, I'm hoping that maybe doing, you know, expressing complex numbers as a two-dimensional number as a two by two matrix will help some people understand uh, complex numbers and imaginary numbers in a way that's not confusing. So uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. And um, it's bedtime. So uh, good night and we'll, uh, I'll be back.